as is our tradition, please join a toast to the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the President. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please excuse me if I'm a little sleepy. 3 a.m. this morning, the red phone rang. It's a damn wedding planner. Two weeks from tonight is Jenna's wedding, so I'm a little wistful this evening. Plus, this is my last White House Correspondents' Dinner as President. You know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. After he left office, Vice President Gore won an Oscar and the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I might win a prize, a publishing clearinghouse or something. <laughs> But thanks for inviting me. Our entertainment tonight is Craig Ferguson. You know, this is a small world. Craig was once in a punk band called Bastards from Hell, which is what Dick and I are going to call our band. <laughs> Craig is Scottish by birth. So is Barney. <laughs> Two months ago, Craig became an American citizen. You... I'm honored to call you fellow American. Ladies and gentlemen, surprisingly, I've enjoyed these dinners. So tonight I thought we'd reminisce a bit. First couple of years I came to this dinner, I was really into slideshows. <laughs> See, my mother over the years has put together at least 70 scrapbooks about uh, our life as a family. What I've done is pull out some of the actual, never before seen photos from these scrapbooks. This, of course, was during the great drought of 1953. <laughs> Dad, Neil, Darrow, Marvin, and Jeff. In my family, with all those kids in the tub, it's not arsenic in the water I'd be worried about. <laughs> Some people have asked me, however, if the vote recount left any hard feelings between my brother Jeb and me. Not a bit. In fact, here's a picture of the governor of Florida. <laughs> we have two dogs. This is our dog, Barney. I tell him with eyebrows like that, he ought to be a senator. <laughs> now, this is our dog, Spot. People often ask me how I came up with that name. I don't know, I'm just kind of a creative guy. The truth is, the door to the Oval Office has a little peephole. This is Karen Hughes peeping in on me. This is Carl Rove peeping in on me. This is Condi Rice peeping in on me. Spot has her own peephole. This is Andy Card peeping in on me. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the Vice President of the United States looking through a peephole. And Dick, I hope you're not doing what it looks like you're doing. Next year, a new president will be standing up here. 
I have to say I'm kind of surprised we don't have more presidential candidates here tonight, like any. <laughs> Senator McCain's not here. He probably wanted to distance himself from me a little bit. You know, he's not alone. Jenna's moving out, too. <laughs> the two Democratic candidates aren't here either. Senator Clinton couldn't get into the building because of sniper fire, and Senator Obama's at church. <laughs> but I'm sure whoever the next president is will show up at these dinners, especially like the dinners in 2005 and 2006 when we had a couple of surprises up our sleeve. And so the city slicker asked the old guy how to get to the nearest town. And the Not that old joke. Not again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been attending these dinners for years <laughs> and just quietly sitting there. Well, I've got a few things I want to say for a change. <laughs> I am married to the President of the United States, and here's our typical evening. <laughs> Nine o'clock. Mr. Excitement here is sound asleep. <laughs> and I'm watching Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am a desperate housewife. So I want to talk about some serious issues, such as... Okay. Here it comes. Nuclear proliferation. Nuclear proliferation. Nuclear proliferation. Nuclear proliferation. All right, all right, maintain. <laughs> Be cool. Let's give this a try. We must enhance noncompliance protocols, sanctioned not only at IAEA formal sessions, but through intercessional contact. <laughs> we must enhance noncompliance protocols. Sanctioned not only at EIEIO formal <laughs> sessions, but through intersexual conduct. <laughs> Nailed it. We've had a lot of fun nights over the years. You remember the year I mentioned Ozzy Osbourne? And he stood up on the chair and blew me a kiss. <laughs> so few leaders get that kind of experience. <laughs> you know, I love the mixed crowds here. It's an interesting crowd. You know, just think, Pamela Anderson and Mitt Romney in the same room. <laughs> Isn't that one of the signs of the apocalypse? <laughs> Which brings me to Dick. <laughs> for eight years as vice president, Dick has ridden shotgun. For, for, that's probably not the best analogy. <laughs> but he is a dear friend, and he's been the greatest straight man in the history of the world. Dick, I don't know what I would have done for material without you. <laughs> I think the encourage you, vice president, to get out fresh air and exercise. <laughs> so let me show you what he's been up to.
and Laura were out of town recently, so I called up Dick and said, why don't we go to a movie? He said, great idea. Let's go to a cowboy movie. <laughs> yep, finally went to see Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Let me tell you. Wee! <laughs> yippee yi yo -yay. Dick sat through the movie. He didn't yes. say a word. We come out after a while, he says, nice horses. <laughs> I said, yep. Then he became real quiet again, kind of serious-like. I knew something was on his mind. Finally, he turned to me and said, you don't suppose the Lone Ranger and Tonto <laughs> Down the lane, I look Dick Cheney strolling with documents he's been withholding. It's good to touch the brown, brown grass of home. Yes, you're all going to miss me the way you used to diss me. But soon I'll touch the brown, brown grass of home. What I like best about these evenings is the laughter and the chance to thank you for, for the work you do for the country. I also view this as a good chance to put aside our differences for a few hours. And one thing we all share, whether we're native citizens or new citizens like Craig, is a tremendous appreciation for our people in uniform. An appreciation symbolized by the United States Marine Band, which is celebrating its 210th anniversary this year. I love the band. And so I'm going to say my farewell to you by doing something I've always wanted to do. And I do it in the spirit of our shared love for this country. 